Sylvester Stallone, one of the most famous action heroes who ever lived. Who else would have had enough balls to take on German terrorist Rudger Hauer? Well, before Stallone achieved fame in his groundbreaking 1970s role in Farewell, My Lovely, Sly would show us just how big his balls really are. In 1970, Stallone took part in the 8mm adult film production of A Party at Kitty and Studs for a mere $200 a day, which by today's standards, adjusted for inflation, equals out to about $137,000. So really, it was a pretty good pay for a couple days' work. The movie is notoriously known as the Sylvester Stallone porno, and most everyone knows about the movie, but not quite as many people have actually seen it. And if Stallone weren't in the movie, it probably wouldn't have made it out of a box of stag films. The rest of the cast, aside from Stallone and one other actress, never went on to do any other film before or after this one, so it definitely makes one wonder, what were the circumstances in which this film was made? Was this even shot with the intent on it being released? Or was it just filmed as a hobby by someone with a camera fetish? And Dare I ask what the hell ever happened to the rest of the cast members? Never mind that, though. The important thing is, I have seen The Party at Kitty and Studs. But that's not the title we know it by, is it? <laughs> After Stallone's newfound fame, the movie was re-edited and re-released by porn filmmaker Gail Palmer in an effort to cash in on The Italian Stallion. In fact, that's what they retitled it to, The Italian Stallion. One of the rare alternate titles is even Baki. What the hell does that even mean? Baki? What did cocky slip their mind? Personally, I prefer my own alternate title to it, Rocky Threesome. But the Rocky references don't stop there. Oh wow, did they ever want to cash in on Rocky. There's a part in the movie where Stallone is sitting with Kitty and he's upset because he isn't famous yet, which is kind of weird seeing how one day he would become famous, but then they dub in Kitty, telling him that one day he will soon be known as the Italian Stallion. This movie is fucking psychic! <laughs> Let's look at some more of this. Hmm, interesting. This is, uh, starting out rather beautiful, actually. Almost like it were an ultra-pretentious, snobby student film. Did... did I make this movie? You want to take bets that the movie is going to start getting ridiculous? Good God! The musical score is completely redone to make it sound a tad bit like the Rocky theme. And lucky for the fucking filmmakers, they happen to get Stallone acting very, very Rocky in a scene where he runs around in the snow and climbs a jungle gym. Stallone plays Stud, and for the first half of the movie, we're told in narration from Kitty just how great of a lover Stud is, and how she can't wait for him to come home to her apartment. I'm beginning to think mine's between my legs, or maybe it's just what Stud does to me. And that's putting it lightly. Seriously, the dialogue in this movie would make a trash novelist vomit up a haystack. Is she talking about Stud or a jar of pickles? This movie is just kind of weird. At its core, it's really nothing more than a collection of sex scenes. And in the last act of the movie, that's really all we get. Get it up, Rock! The general plot of the movie is that Kitty and Stud are lovers, and they invite other swingers over to their apartment to have an orgy. The end. See, in the days before the internet, people not only actually had sex, but sometimes they would do it in groups. But what makes this movie weird are the filler scenes. Stud says a girl hasn't completed her education until she knows how to really lick a good joint. I was thinking about Southern Californians the other day. What? It was warm and pretty and green and something else again. That, by the way, is about a third of Stallone's dialogue in the movie. And, wow, you know, I actually think Stud might be one of the deepest characters Stallone has ever played in a movie. Be careful, you bit me last time. I still stand by that statement. There's an odd scene where Stud whips Kitty with a 
belt because she accidentally bit him and, you know. There's an odd disco dancing scene with Kitty dancing naked by herself, plus a scene where, during the orgy, everyone gathers in the bathroom to take a break, only they walk in on one of the ladies douching. Everyone knows you're supposed to do that before the orgy starts. There are honestly a couple parts in the movie where you really do see some early potential in Stallone, like in a scene where he comes back from losing money in a card game, and, well, kind of throws a bit. See, that was pretty good. It, it, what the hell? When did this movie turn into the Night Porter? And in the 70s, did everyone end the orgies by playing Ring Around the Roses? The only reason to see this movie is obviously for curiosity factor, and the fact that the dialogue in the movie is stuff that I swear is usually only heard inside of a porn producer's audition room, but the sex scenes in the movie are basically pretty lame. I can't really show any of them, but trust me, you're not missing anything. Boy, are you not missing anything. And just what am I supposed to make of lines like this? Was that meant as a joke? Was she acting right there, or did that accidentally end up in the movie? That's one of the oddest things I've ever seen in a porno film. It, seriously, was she really talking to the director right there? Ugh, in case you're wondering, she starts screwing the girl sitting next to her. The movie is obviously shot as pretty hard, soft core. It's right there between the two. It shows very much everything except penetration. I'll be velvet mouth on your shank of love. And what's with this guy pulling out a banana all of a sudden? And how about the part where the only curse word that is said is bleeped out with what sounds like a cow fart? What do you say we go inside and uh... All right. There is a version out there with hardcore porno inserts using other actors, but whatever. It's bad when the sex scenes are so lame that you're looking forward to the dialogue. Especially when it's dialogue like this. I heard about this guy the other day who was making these sex films. And he had this idea for this naked chick to be oiling up this horse. She gets the chick all... She gets the horse all sexually aroused. Why is he bringing up Joe D'Amato? Yawn! You know, I'm used to watching movies about nympho-Nazis, splooge-faced zombies, and teenage Satanists. A movie where Stallone just fucks a bunch of people and dances. Honestly, is kind of a step up. And at least it's better than Rhinestone. Billy, come to do that on purpose! You hit me! 